God good? 35 and 41. Forgive us this morning for the glitches. Power was triggering out, but thank God for God. Hallelujah. Amen. Electric power will go out, but God's power will never go out. I can depend on the power of God. The Bible says, after that, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. You shall have power. That word power means dunamis. Dynamite power. Tell somebody, I got dynamite on me. Hallelujah. I'm about to explode right now. I need somebody to give God praise. Right? Give God a dynamite praise right now. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over, say over, over. unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Verse 37 says, and there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part or the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillar. And they awake him and said to him, Master, carries thou that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Remain standing, we're going to pray, but the message I'm going to preach from, storms have hidden blessings. Father, help us now. In Jesus' name, amen. You may have your seats. Storms have hidden blessings. Sometimes God has to hide stuff from you because if he showed everything to you, you wouldn't be able to handle it. If God really shows you what he wants to do in your life and what it takes to get it done, many of us will quit right now. Because oftentimes God will take you through some stuff to get you to some stuff. I said something already. God would have caused you to go through turmoil, catastrophe, challenge, adversity, have you to deal with cantankerous people. To get you to a place where he can trust you that you can be who you want to be. I want to show us this morning, Tanya, some hidden blessings in the storms of life. This pericope this morning has great impact and great import. It's a vivid Sega, a regnant sort of novella. I discovered that storms can reveal many things. Storms are like valleys. They show you who you are. Storms show you who your friends are. Talk back to me if you can. And most importantly, storms show you who God is. The blessing of a storm is that they reveal the Savior. Had it not been for the storm, I wouldn't have called on God like I called him. So in the text, Jesus had been teaching all day, Cousin Michelle. And he's so tired in his humanity. You have to see this. This is a perfect way of expressing uh, the incarnate Jesus. He's tired in his humanity. So he's sleeping, Jason, on a pillar. He's been healing. He's been exercising demons he's been with the crowds all day feeding and he has used this boat um, to preach all day in he eased the boat into the water a little and he used this particular boat as a pulpit 
and he used the waves of the sea as his microphone. And when the even had come, he says, let us pass over the other side. Now notice, he did not say, let us go under. But he said, let's go over on the other side. Which signifies to me, if God says we're going over, we're going over. I don't care what gets in my way. I don't care who try to stop me. If God says I'm going to be something, you're going to be something. If you're going where God is calling you to go, there will be trial, but you will make it. Touch somebody, tell them you'll make it, you'll make it. But before I, I go any further in this particular text, I want to look at verse 36 because sometimes, Jody, we rush over verses that we think are insignificant, which has so much meaning. Look at verse 36 in the text. It says this, And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was. Did y'all see that? They took him as he was. Oftentimes we will just skim over phrases and sentences like that because we want to get to the shout about Jesus rebuking the wind. But this particular part here has so much meat on it and I want to rinse out everything I can so you can understand the book as well. They took him as he was. I don't want you to miss that. They took him as he was. Which says to me, if he's going to be who he is, we cannot be who we are. I think you missed that. Watch this. He can't be him and we be us in the same ship. You still don't feel me. If he's on board, somebody got to change. You going to get it. I still don't think you got it though. He's on the ship as he was. And if he is as he was, then we can't be what we used to be. Are y'all getting this here? Because if he's on the ship and I'm on the ship, somebody got to change. And since he's not going to change, it must mean I have to change. Because God won't come on your ship your way. He will not come your way. If he's going to be on your board, in your ship, somebody got to change their attitude. Somebody have to change their disposition. Have I got a witness here? Because he will not be on board and let you be the captain. They took him as he was. So Jesus, he gets in the hinder part of the ship. And I don't have a lot of time to talk about that. But the hinder part is the pilot's place. The part where controlled is labeled. The instructor's place. He gets on the boat. They take him as he was. He gets on this boat that he uses all day to preach on. And he's tired. And he goes into the pallet's place. And he falls asleep on a pillow. You're going to see it. The disciples are, are rowing. And all is calm. In the midst of their voyage, something happens. The storm happens suddenly. Oh God, I wish uh, somebody could testify that you dealt with some sudden storms. You, you were minding your business and out of nowhere, y'all cried. Storm showed up right there at your house. You get a phone call, storm. You go to the doctors uh, for a checkup and they, they suddenly see something else. That's a storm, yeah. Some of us can testify that we experienced some sudden storm. So here we find the disciples in the grip of a fierce storm. Now notice they're in this storm because they have been commanded by the Lord to cross the Sea of Galilee. Yeah. They are in the storm because the Lord commanded them to go on the other side. Now get this. That presupposes to me. That God set this thing up. 
Uh, can I help somebody? Uh, uh, God prearranged storms to show us what's been hidden all the time. God used storms as a vehicle to transport his miracle unto your life. That's why uh, you, you, you ought not uh, uh, fret and be um, messed up when storms come into your life. You ought to thank God and be in expectancy because there's something hidden in the storm that God wants to reveal. Uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm going to preach myself happy today. I promise you that. Uh, watch this. They're struggling um, in this fear storm. These men are in the will of God. They are obeying him, and yet we see them struggling against the storm. They're struggling in a fear storm while in the middle of the will of God. Let me submit to you from my back row church that you can run into a storm doing right. Uh, uh, I discovered um, that obedience to God won't prevent you from testing and challenge. In fact, your obedience to him provokes all hell to break loose in your life. But be of good cheer. Yeah, God will reveal the hidden blessings to your setbacks. Have I got a witness here? I said God will reveal hidden blessings through your setbacks. It's a blessing to find out who ain't really for you. I said he will show you hidden blessings through your setback because you really find out who for you and who are not for you when you get set back. Come on, y'all. You really know who got your back when uh, uh, things start happening in your life that's not in your favor at the time people will roll out on you but that's a blessing to find out who's really with you because you don't need no extra weight around you dragging you and lifting from you and pulling on you you need somebody in your life when you're down will look at you and say get up from there God got a plan for your life I need somebody right now to grab your neighbor and say neighbor I need somebody who will have my back when I reach my setback when I'm on target, I don't need so many people. I need you when I'm down, when I'm busting and disgusting. I need you when all hell has broken loose. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. But the Bible says there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Have I got a witness here? There's been times in my life when I didn't have nobody. But I thank God when I called on the Lord. Then they show up. And he didn't only show up, but he showed up. And he blessed everything in my house. Come on, throw your head back. Give God praise and say, Lord, I thank you for showing up in my storm. Showing me who my friends are. And showing me who I am. Storms are blessings in disguise. Storms remove the debris in your life. It will get rid of people who mean you no good. If it was left up to you, you would keep people close to you. But God sent a storm to blow the dead leaves away from your house. Storms will blow dead leaves from your house. Storm will clean up your house. Storms will clean up your yard. Storms will get you a manicure. Cut away stuff that shouldn't be there in the first place. Because we have an inability to cut it off ourselves. So God sends the storm. He's the architect, he has the blueprint of the type of storm that you need. Your storm may not be like my storm, but he has the blueprint of the type of storm.
storm that you need. I may not need what you need. You may not need what I need. But all of us have a need. And God knows everybody's need all the same time. Why? Because he's omniscient. He's all knowing. He knows what you need before you need it. Notice now, they're in this storm in the will of God. These men are stuck in a storm and they are unable to get out. Have you ever been there? Stuck in a crisis and can't get out. Stuck in a challenge. Stuck in a fight. Stuck in a relationship. Stop in a storm and no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, it seems that you can't make any headway. It seems like the storm will never end. And listen, beloved, you ought to pay me for this. I worked hard. Storms can be devastating without discriminating. Uh, 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 watch this. Storms um, bring devastation without discrimination. In other words, no matter who you are, uh, if you live long enough, storms are going to come in your life. Talk back to me if you can. All of us in here this morning are in a storm syndrome. You're headed towards a storm. You're coming out of a storm. I'm preaching good today. Or you're in a storm right now. But if you are in a storm, you better make sure that Jesus is on board. God, I feel good today. Uh, hear me, my brothers and sisters. I'd rather have them on board sleeping than to not have them on board at all. Y'all not saying nothing. Because if he's sleeping, I can wake him up. Y'all not saying nothing. Whenever you in a storm, you got to get your eyes off the storm and get your eyes on the Savior. And sometimes I get real annoyed and real sick about people who don't go to church. And when storms come in people live or in the community, they always talking about what the church needs to do. Where is the church? Uh, the church is the same place it was two weeks ago when you didn't come. Have I got a witness always talking about where's the church? And I can't stand people who don't go to church always telling the church what we ought to do. The body of Christ ought to stick with the body of Christ and let people go where they need to go who don't go to church. Can I tell you where they go? Go to hell. Oh, that's where they go. I said, that's where they go. If you don't know, say, I cried, y'all throw that cuss. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sin and working out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling, you're on your way to hell. Let me plug this in. The time to prepare for the storm is not in the midst of it. People want to run to the church and where's the church and I, I need help and, and then you want you know me to open up the church when it's closed but when it was open we can't find you. <laughs> Beloved, there's a storm coming and if you're not ready, you're going to be left behind. So in the text, that was all introduction. I feel good this morning. So in the text, number one, there's danger, it's on the screen, in the storm. In the text. The danger in the text is that the disciples are experienced seamen and they have never seen a storm like this before. My brothers and sisters, I don't care who your friends are. I don't care um, what you got a degree in. Uh, there will arise a situation in your life that no matter how smart you are, you won't be able to handle it. They, 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 they were rowing. And the scripture says that their boat got full. A boat uh, full of water, first lady, represents trouble. Uh, uh, uh. 
some of you got trouble on board right now. But I thank God for trouble because trouble will send you to church. Y'all not saying nothing. Trouble will, will make you get down on your knees. Come on, y'all. Trouble have you reading Bible at 4 o'clock in the morning. Trouble will humble you. The boat was full with water. Danger. It's a dangerous storm. Uh, it's dangerous to be in a storm and not know Jesus Christ. Have I got a witness here? Uh, now the text says uh, that Jesus uh, is in the midst of the storm sleeping. Uh, the storm was tearing up the boat and Jesus <laughs> slept. Uh, 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 ask me why he's sleeping. Come on, ask me. Come on, come on, ask me. Uh, uh, he's sleeping because Restful sleep belongs to the people who trust God. I don't have to stay up all night because the God of Israel never slumbers nor sleep. So if he's not going to sleep, I'm going to go to sleep at night. Y'all not saying nothing. And Proverbs says my sleep is sweet. Tell somebody, you got to go to sleep at night. Uh, you can't let individuals and situations keep you up all night. Letting people live in your head rent free. The devil is a lie. You got to invict them or evict them out of your mindset so you can sleep at night. I know they did you wrong. I know they did you dirty. I know they carried you bad. I know they talked about you like a dog. I know they treated you like trash, but you got to get them out your mind. You got to be able to sleep at night because God says, I'll give you sweet sleep. Restful sleep are for people who trust in God. So while the storms is raging, I'm sleeping, y'all, y'all. And I'm getting good sleep. I'm dreaming about what God going to do in my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sleep. So danger in the storm. And then I want you to see there, number two, their doubt in the storm. Their danger. They faced the storm they never seen. Uh, now you see their doubt. The greatest storm that night, um, Lil Kenny, was not the sea on Galilee. But the greatest storm that night was in the hearts of the disciples. And one of them had good sense and said, Master, don't you care uh, that we perish? Uh, now, um, this is not that Gospels all had or carried all different ideas in terms of this particular phrase. Matthew was sort of a prayer. Uh, Mark was sort of a uh, 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 sort of a a call. But this this particular uh, text here, in in uh, 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 I mean Luke, it was sort of a plea, a plea. Matthew. It was sort of a prayer. But this is sort of an a accusation. They accused the Lord of not caring about what they were facing. Now before we get too hard on these men, we have to realize that that type of language belongs to the desperate. I'm going somewhere. Uh, you see, when you're in trouble, you don't have time to be nice. When your ship, Jennifer, is about to go under, you don't have time for no pretty prayers. Uh, when your life is about to hit disaster, you don't have time to be thee and thou and your gracious master. And uh, we thank you for your omnipotence. We thank you for your sovereignty, your grace, your eternal majesty, your dominion, and your power. We thank you for who you are to us. And God, no, when you in trouble, you ain't got time. God, if you don't help me, I'm going to lose my mind. God, I need you right now. I got cancer in my body. And if you don't deal with this cancer, it's going to make me die. I don't know what I'm going to do. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help. I know 
Have you ever been there? You ain't had time for those pity prayers. You got to just don't help me right now. I'm telling you, if you don't help me, I'm going to kill this person on this job. If you don't help me, I'm going to kill these children in here. If you don't help me, I'm going to blow my husband's brains out. Some of you got these pretty prayers and I submit to you, you still got pretty prayers because you never encountered a storm yet. But some of us have encountered a storm and we know what it feels like to go into God and say, God, help me today. I can't take another day with this stuff. You got to see about your child. Tell somebody, time out for those pretty prayers. Your omnipotent great. No, God, help me right now I need your help stones will make you desperate and you don't have time to be nice when you're desperate don't you care we're about to lose our life and you're sleeping and I've seen you heal the sick I've seen you feed the five thousand I've seen you make the blind see but we're done and you're sleeping my brothers and sisters desperate people get their prayers answered and the reason why many of you have these pretty prayers could be you haven't had a storm yet. But some of us been through enough stuff that you can testify. It was nobody but God. Have I got a witness here that pulled me out of that stuff I got myself in? Come on, I need somebody to get on your feet and scream. Nobody! Crowd mics, if you will. Crowd mics, if you will. Scream it one more time. Nobody but Jesus. He pulled me out. He pulled me over. He pulled me in. God rescued me. When I hollered loud enough, when I hollered long enough, he came to my rescue. Is that anybody testimony? When I hollered loud. And when I hollered long, he came to save me. Y'all remember Peter and the boys was on a boat. And Jesus came walking on the water and they thought he was a ghost. And Peter said, Lord, is it you? And the Lord said, it is I. And Peter said, if it is you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. And Peter got out of that boat and started to walk on water. But the Bible says he considered the wind. The winds were boisterous. And he considered the wind and started to sink. And notice in the text, Peter didn't go into these pretty prayers. You magnificent, great thou art God that you are. You're the God of the whole universe. You always was, is, and always shall be. No, Peter said, Lord, save me. Come on, say amen. When you really need God to save you, you'll forget all those lofty words and get to the point. Tell somebody, get to the point. Save me. The Bible says he reached out his right hand, pulled Peter up, and they walked back to the boat. I got to hurry. But their plea for help, watch this, their cry, their plea for help, did more than the storm did. Did you hear that, Jody? Their plea for help did more than the storm did. The storm didn't wake Jesus up. But their cry for help woke Jesus up. Uh, there's a pastor, Reverend Nelson. He's gone home to be with the Lord. And he was working in his church real late, Charlotte, one night. And he was too tired to drive home. So he got one of his deacons to drive him home. But when he got home, he had left his keys at the church. So when he got to the door, he rang the doorbell and because his wife was there. And he looked through the window and she was asleep on the sofa. He rings the doorbell. She didn't get up. She didn't answer. 
So he started knocking on the door. She still didn't answer. She still didn't get up. He took the screen and started slamming it against the frame of the door. And she still didn't get up. She still didn't answer. He went and got a stick and went uh, under the house and started jamming up to the floor uh, beneath the sofa where his wife was sleeping. She didn't answer. She still didn't get up. And so by this time, he was afraid. He didn't know what was going on. He thought his wife might have died. So he went across the street to his neighbor's house, knocked on the door of the neighbor's house and said, Hey, guys, um, I left my keys at the church and I'm trying to get in the house and my wife's sleeping. I'm not knowing what's going on. May I use your phone? So he used their phone and called his wife 22 times. And she still didn't answer. She didn't get up. So in a hurry, his neighbors came with their night clothes on and the deacon and they walked across the street. And by the time they got to the porch, she gets up and runs upstairs. And so she finally comes back downstairs and noticed that they were on the porch. And she opened the door and said, honey, I didn't know that you were here all this time. She said, baby, I rung the doorbell and you didn't get up and you didn't answer. She said, baby, I was asleep. I didn't hear it. He said, well, I knocked on that door hard as I can. She said, well, baby, I, I, I'm telling you, really, I, I, I did not hear it. I couldn't answer. I was asleep. He said, not, not that now I, I slammed the, the, the screen door into the frame of the door. And she said, baby, I just didn't hear it. She said, you see that stick uh, in, in the yard? I took the stick and I went up under the house and started jamming the floor where the sofa was that you were asleep on. And you didn't answer. You didn't, you, you, you didn't come see what was going on. She said, baby, I promise you. I, I was asleep. She said, I went over to the neighbor's house and I used their phone and I called you 22 times and you didn't answer. Uh, you, 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 you didn't get up. So we walked over, me and the deacon and our neighbors with their night clothes on and when we got close to the, the porch, you get up and run upstairs. What, what, what's up with that? She said, I heard my baby crying. And I come to tell you right there, if you in a storm right now, I dare to cry out to God because God will come see about you. God will come rescue you. I don't know what your problem is right now, but if you can open up your mouth, he'll hear the call of his child. David said, I cried unto the Lord and he heard my cry. Where my cry is at? God, if you don't help me, I need you right now. I need you right now. If you need God to help you, I dare you to cry out to him right now. Jesus, I'm done, stood on board and in their danger and in their doubt, as I rushed through my clothes, they made some discoveries. My last point, discovery in the storm. And here's the lesson I'm through. He gets on board that ship and he raises his hand and he says, peace, comma, be still. There's a shout in this. I don't want to rush through this. I want to ring out all the shout in this phrase right here. Now, he's, he's talking to the wind like it's a person. Do you hear what I said, the name? Uh, he's talking to the wind. Here it is. Second person singular. When you be still. When I want you to hush. Y'all not saying nothing. Because the waves wasn't cutting up by themselves. Are y'all saying something? That the only way the waves could get in the boat was because of the wind. And too often, brothers and sisters, we want to deal with the waves but ain't looking at the wind. The scripture says he rebuked the wind. He chastised the wind. He says, peace. I made you so hush because all confusion is is peace that's been disturbed. Am I doing all right? Peace, be still. Now that word be still is in the perfect present imperative. So now let's put them together. Peace, you be still. You muzzle yourself. Peace, you hush. Now waves lie down until I tell you to get up. Y'all not saying nothing. Uh, Y'all not getting this. Let me see if I can help you. Uh, uh, now the way I, I, I was raised. Baldy. Our parents knew what to do with us. When we got out of control. Because they made us. They owned 
us. They created us. They fed us and they clothed us. Listen, and they housed us. So when we got out of control, our parents knew what to do with us. They said, sit down and if you move again. Anybody raised like me? Now, if our parents can't control what they made, don't you think God can't control what he made? Yeah. I'm on my way here. Peace. He says, hush, be still. And the Bible says there was a great calm. I'm in my seat now. But in verse 41, after Jesus stilled the storm, they were more afraid of Jesus than they were of the storm. Because the Bible says in the storm, they feared but after Jesus calms the storm, the Bible says they feared exceedingly. Here, here, here's the hidden blessing. One of them, and I'm out of here. They feared, and here's the hidden blessing. Uh, they, they recognized whose presence they were really in. Here's the blessing. They said, what manner of man is this? Uh, uh, that the winds and the waves obey him that will fall at his feet at a gentle command. When you recognize whose presence you're in, you don't play when you come to church. Uh, because you realize that you could have been dead. That storm that came to take you out could have took your life. But you're sitting here looking good, smelling good, eating good, feeling good. You ought to say it's all good and give God praise for not letting you die in the stuff you were in. Now, now here's the hidden blessing. And if I can get 15 of y'all to shout, we're going to leave this place and have a good day. If you go back to the first verse, I told you in the beginning, the same boat that was in a storm, Jesus used that boat as a pulpit. Are y'all ready for this? Y'all ready to shout? Anything God used cannot sink. That's your healing blessing. If God is using you, I don't care if you lose the house, that ain't sinking. I don't care if they left you, that ain't sinking. Sometimes they ain't leave you, God remove them. Not because they're bad, you just ain't good for each other. Y'all not saying nothing here. Just because you lose don't mean you're sinking. Tell somebody, if you're with God, you cannot sink. He used that same boat as a pulpit. And when it got in the storm, it could not sink. Because anything God used would never sink. Losing your house is not sinking. All the way you look at it. Losing your house can save you. God had to snatch the house to restructure who you are. There's hidden blessings in the storms. They reveal who the Savior is. They refine the saint. And they remind the saint that everything that goes on, God is in control. And if he's on your ship and he's using you, no matter what storm come in your life, here's your place to shout. Look at your neighbor. They don't shout. I don't want you to speak to him for the rest of the year. Tell them that storm going to pass. The storm is passing over. I need somebody to get on your feet and tell your neighbor the storm is passing over. Shout hallelujah. Yes, it is. Come on, look down your road and say, yes, it is. I don't care what your storm is. Hallelujah. It's going to pass over. I never saw a storm hallelujah. that didn't pass over. And if the storm takes everything that you have, you still have your integrity. If the storm takes your house, you still got to praise. If the storm takes your clothes, you still got to shout. If the storm takes your car, y'all not saying, I still got my joy. Hallelujah. And all I've been through, I still have my joy. Because the storm is not working against me. The storm is working for me. It's a vehicle to reveal who God really is in your life. 
you will have never appreciated healing until you got sick. You will never appreciate deliverance until you was bound up in something that you got yourself in. That man you got hooked up with, you couldn't even get away from him. And you thought he left you, but he didn't leave you. God took him away from you. Because you ain't had sense enough to let him go. Your feelings was wrapped in your stone. Therefore, you became an emotional roller coaster. And whatever he said, you went up and down. Put you on a merry-go-round. And let you off where he picked you up at. And you thought it was over. But you decided to call on him. And he heard you cry. The old preacher say, I love the Lord. And he heard my cry. Pitied my every groan. And as long as I live, I'm chasing after his throne. Hallelujah. Grab somebody and tell them, neighbor, I'm glad that the storm is over. Give God praise right now. Tell them one thing I know about God. I know he's all right. <laughs> Say, neighbor, I may not know three things. Tell them, neighbor, I may not know two things. But there's one thing I do know. I know he's all right. Everybody stand up. Ask your question, ain't he all right? Yes. That's bad grammar, but that's good gospel. Yes. Ain't he good?